Hello. Uh, the first looping statement we're going over in this unit is going to be called the for loop, as stated here in this nice little header title. And to go over what a for loop is exactly, because all of these looping statements have different purposes, although they seem a bit similar at first glance. But the for loop, it looks over code while a certain condition is true. That's what they all do. Nothing special about that. But the for loop, it contains three main parts. These parts are known as the value, which is part one, the condition, part two, and the action, it's part three. So in a for loop, you literally have these three little sections here. You feed a value to the for loop, then you have a condition saying if the value is less than five, for example, and then what happens? And with this, the value is a counter. It's required for this type of loop as it's focused on increasing or decreasing the value. That's what this action part is for, and I'll show you in the syntax. But in summary, you can count how many times you wish something to be executed uh, as a for loop. As I said, all looping statements allow you to repetitively execute snippets or chunks or massive blocks of code. And the for loop gives you a bit more technicality as you can specify exactly how many times you want something done. So here's the syntax. And as I mentioned a while back, syntax is the structure and how code appears for you being the programmer. For is the keyword. You have for, opening and closing bracket. And then you'd have your opening and closing braces, the same as an if statement. You remember there's if, and then you have your condition. However, picture this to be an if statement, except instead of just a condition, you're adding a value on the left and an action on the right. This can be a little bit confusing at first, because firstly, you need semicolons on the first two uh, statements, but in the third one, you don't. Where I've never really come to be sure why that is. It's possibly for structure or the PHP developers just like picking on you guys. But that's how it is. So for here, you'd feed a value, then your condition, then your action, which would be like value plus plus. You're adding more to the value. And this is what would be executed. So code executed until condition is false. So it's demonstration time. I'm going to show you guys what it looks like to put this in action. As I could rant on about this all day, we won't get anywhere like that. Shall we? Let's move on. All right, first thing we're going to do is the typical stuff. We're going to go to htdocs, find gogphp. We're going to create a new folder, as we have in previous units. We're going to call this looping. Don't need to put statements. You should all know loops are statements. They're just called looping statements. And inside here, our first file is going to be for. Let's just call it for. I feel like keeping the title short now, it's a lot more efficient if you think about it. And yoop, I'm going to open the for loop.php. Let's see what's in here. And I have a previous project open, I better close that. There we go. Now let's make our PHP magical awesome tags. And just make sure everything's working. And I use double quotes, which I shouldn't do. I always tell myself to stop using that. Bad call. And alright, for.php. Hero, it worked. And now I'm going to show you how a for loop works, because that's what we're here for. This is what you guys are not paying for, because my tutorials are free and I'm awesome. But yeah, here's what we're doing. For loop, you have your basic opening, closing, all that good stuff, as I showed you before. And just to make it easier to look at, I'll put some spacing there. Now inside, here's how it works. Remember I said before, you have your value, then your condition, and then your action, correct? And technically, this is an action, too. This is more of a command. You'd say... No, not double quotes. Echo, let's make it say, hello, or the loop is working. This is what we want it to say. And we're going to use concatenation, just because you guys should know how to use that by now. And we're also going to embed HTML, because you know, this is stuff we've done in the past. I'm just trying to include it as much as I can. And here we go, because that's going to work. You're going to change the value to a variable we'll declare up here. And we're going to make a variable called counter. This is a very standard value. We'll make this counter equal to 5. And the value will now be counter. Change that here. So now you are basically said 5. Here you go, for loop. Take my number. Enjoy it. Embrace my number. And the condition here, from the previous conditional operators and all that, you need to do a condition. So let's say if, um, let's see here perhaps, counter is greater than zero. So if five is greater than zero, well, it's five right now, what's our action going to be? 
Remember, again, with the conditional operators, you could do this. Counter, minus, minus. So subtract, subtract, whatever you'd like to call this. You put two of those, and if you recall, this will remove one. De-increment operator, that's what this does. And the increment operator is the opposite, but we're not wanting to add. And the reason for that is if we were to add one to counter every time, it would never be, uh, oops, yeah, that makes sense. Greater than zero, there we go, less than zero. There you go. It's less than zero. We don't want that. So, you know, just for the sake of being more simple, because I don't want to confuse myself in the logic here, if this value is greater than 5, and we'll make counter 0, because counting upwards is a lot more easy. And with this, you can do uh, incrementation now, or whatever you like to call it. So there you go. It's a little bit more brain-friendly now. And with a lot of this logical stuff, you can end up warping backwards and doing things in really funky ways that you didn't plan. So we're just doing it in this easy manner. And in plain English, and uh, if you just say how to describe it in the easiest way, you've taken the value of 0, and you're saying if 0 is greater than less than 5, ah, I'm feeling butthurt today. I'm, it's 1.45 a.m. I haven't slept in like two days. Sorry about that. If counter is less than 5, well, it is. It's 0 right now. The counter is going to have 1 added to it, and then it's going to echo the loop is working. But after that, it's not done. It's like Billy Mays advertising. It's like, but wait, there's more. It's going to go back up, and it's going to be like a TV spokesman and tell you to do this again. They have more to offer you. It's going to check counter and say, oh, counter's one now. It's going to say, is counter less than five? <laughs> well, you bet. Let's add another one to counter, shall we? Echo, the loop is working. Whoa, let's go back up here. We're not done. Counter's two, less than five, plus. And then once it actually say, once the counter is six, it's going to say, is the counter less than 5? Or say if the counter was 5, it'll say, is counter less than 5? Um, no. So it's just going to stop. Break is another word you could use, I guess, because breaking is it's breaking out of the statement, and it's moving on to the load, all the other code. So we'll do this. Start off with this. I put BR here as a break, right? So you can see what happens after. We'll check our for code. There you go. The loop is working, loop is working, 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 working. One two, three, four, five times it's been executed. Just like to acknowledge that if you were to put an equal sign here, it would then echo it six times. And this is just a couple little things you should remember. It's only echoing it like this until the value is five, then it's no longer less. But if you wanted to do that, you could put an equals and then say, even if it's five, it's still less than or equal to five. So it's all right. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying, man. Yeah. And just to show that it works and it breaks out, we'll put down here. The loop has ended and the condition broke. I don't really know how to phrase breaking and like that. There you go. It echoes it five times, correct? And then it says the loop has ended and the condition broke. So now it's moved on to the next stuff. And that is pretty much how a four works. If you wanted to make this better, you could uh, change this to a 3, and then the condition's only true for two times, correct? However, like I said, I don't suggest doing this kind of funky stuff, because that's what I was doing right now when I'm tired. It gets confusing with your logic and all that, so rather just change this to a 10, go take a look, press it again, and you have all this code being printed out. Isn't that way more efficient? And if you want to put a 1,000 even, and just be hardcore, look at me, I'm so pro, look how fast that executes. You've now written this a thousand times rather than going echo and just echo, 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 echo. You know how ridiculous that would look in your code? Well, thank goodness we have this developed in PHP and many other languages. It makes your life much better as a programmer. And I hope my little uh, disoriented video here helped explain the basics of this to you. We'll keep using it throughout the series. But now it's time to move on to the next looping statement.